Okay. So I was doing football, swimming, track, the whole nine. So I really didn't know I was obese until I went to the doctor. Um, so I was real athletic, but I ate whatever I wanted to. I'm from over Alabama. So uh, we eat meals every single night. But when I heard, oh, I was obese, that day I started consciously eating healthy. Gotcha. Like, as an 11, 12 year old, I'm eating grilled versus fried. Mm. I'm eating fruit versus sweets. And um, I just kept building that lifestyle. So I knew at the age of 11, I wanted to be a personal trainer. I said, if I don't make it to the NFL by the time I'm 21 years old, I'm going to have my own gym. And I actually got my own gym when I was 20 years old. Okay, good for so, you, man. Yeah. And the new book, 10 Ways to Avoid the Hype, what's that book talking about? Yeah, so a lot of people, when they first start off in health, they listen to YouTube, listen to all their friends that never worked out, listen to their family members that never had a trainer. So they don't know which direction to go. So this book is a, it's a book that helps you go in the right direction. Uh, gets rid of the myths and it breaks the myths and show you how to live a healthier life just to get started. Yeah, I want them big Sam abs. Oh man, I'm trying to get mine back. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get it back. We, we went on that cruise, man, that Tom John cruise, but hey, oh, ain't good. Man, all that free food. Yeah. Oh man, so they I'm, eat. I'm trying to get back right. Man. I, I gotta go holler my man. Hey, speaking of cruising, man, did you guys hear the story about that uh, Norwegian cruise ship? It was a 33-year-old Filipino crew member who fell off the Norwegian gateway. Uh, it's not yet been revealed how he fell off on Saturday afternoon, but guess what? He was found the next day after 22 hours of searching. Now, the U.S. Coast Guard scoured the area about 1,636 square miles using planes and boats, according to CBS Miami, but they failed to find the man. Well, on Sunday, however, he was spotted swimming... Wow. In the sea, by a crew aboard a different cruise ship. Uh, the Carnival Glory was riding right past dude, saw him swimming <laughs> in the ocean after 22 hours of searching. Wow. Castaway Part 2. Man. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about this dude skills is swimming over 22 man. hours in the ocean. Hey, man. Hey, I mean, that was me. I'm pretty sure I could have probably did 36 on my back. You know what I'm saying? Look, <laughs> did that little back. That little I, got back. back. I got a backstroke out this world, man. I could have been a swimmer in the Olympics, man. I got a backstroke out this world. I'm telling you, man. I know how to swim with one arm and go straight. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people go in circles. I can go straight. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, Big Sam. I appreciate that. Now we know. Now we know. <laughs> Jamie, 22 hours swimming. Man, man, he he has. I, I can't wait to see what this dude look like. Yeah, man, he probably yeah, he probably gonna be on IVs for the next week though. Probably so, right? Oh, totally yeah, dehydrated. Yeah, totally he, dehydrated. He for, for people that are looking to get started, man, that may feel like you know they need to do something. What, what's the first thing a person needs to do? So the first thing I tell somebody to get started is get started. You know, a lot of times we make excuses. We live, we live in that box of excuse items. Uh, we think about, we look at a, and look and compare ourselves to the person that's been working out their whole life. And we think, i never look like that. But uh, you literally got to start off one day at a time. It's a habit, you know, an act of habituation mm -hmm. won't fail you. So I tell, start with 21 days, you yeah. know. Be conscious about your eating, be conscious about your workout, and um, it'll start to make sense. There you go. As you do it, it'll become a habit, your body will want it, and it'll get easier. Yeah, as it pertains to fitness, um, uh, Jamie said just get started as it comes to uh, movies. Yeah. People got to get started, man. And what's some of the first things that, you know, a young filmmaker like yourself did to get started on that first project? Well, first, first thing I did was figure out how I was going to pay for the movie. Mm -hmm. So that's where the funding comes in. Once I got that together, a script or a story turned into a script and then I started filming. You know what I mean? So it doesn't matter. It didn't matter if I had a phone or a camera. It, you know, they got public access. You can check out a camera. Just tell a story. You know what I mean? It don't got to be perfect. I always say um, done is better than perfect. There you, go. you know what I mean? So my movie, The Perfect Romance, is a perfect example of done instead of perfect. Because we had a lot of uh, mistakes in this movie. Mm -hmm. But it was funny, and the distribution company loved it. And, yeah, you know, they put it out at the beginning of the year and we've been going with it. That's what I'm talking about. And Big yeah. Sam, you've been in this game for a long time in the in the yeah, like industry. Yeah. <laughs> and the industry has changed, brother, oh. hasn't it? Man, it's it's changed a lot, man. You gotta think we came out, bro, we still had vinyl. You know what I'm saying? We 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 used to take our vinyl to the club mm -hmm. for the DJ. Then it got to with CDs and then we got Thumb drives, and then you got streaming, and 
it's like it's, it's totally different, man. Like we didn't have no internet when we was out, so yeah. And we had had YouTube and Ooh. and the Instabook and you know what I'm saying, Facegram <laughs> and all that. But when we was out, oh man, we I think we you talk about breaking the internet. Oh, we'd have broke the internet. Yeah, I'm sure. To. So I'm sure. Hey we'd guys, we gotta we'd have broke some homes up, all kind of stuff. <laughs> hey, oh. we got an awesome cast in here with us today. Big Sam's in the building. Jamie is here. Mo is here. We will come back. We got your birthdays and shout outs. And guess what? Big Sam brought breakfast this morning. Sure did. I sure did. I'm about to go get me a plate, bro. Yeah, look at you. Spark of the joy in the morning. Power 108.9. Shout out. Who you with? <laughs>
31 years, ladies and gentlemen. If you've ever watched The Simpsons and heard Lisa Simpson, yeah. her name is Yearly Smith. She's yeah. 54 years old today. She is the voice of Lisa Simpson. She has been rocking that job for the past 31 years. So she's in her 20s. Yeah. Yeah, you got yeah, Karen like Boyd. Karen <laughs> <laughs> APS math. <man. laughs> there we go. Moises and Lou, a former Major League Baseball player, turns 52 years old today. Did not know he was from Atlanta, Georgia. Also, happy birthday to Montel Williams, who turns 62 years old today. And also, attorney Gloria Allred, who turns 77 years old today. Got to say happy birthday to my little cousin up in Durham, North Carolina. Keisha is celebrating a birthday to you. Happy birthday, Keisha. And also, got to say happy birthday to my partner, my big sister up in Southview, that's up in Oxon Hill, Maryland, right off of Southern Avenue. Uh, happy birthday to Stella. Stella turns up. Uh, uh, she probably want me to tell you. Tell her. Oh, don't do it, don't do it. Don't yeah, do it. I ain't going to do that. Yo, so if you're celebrating a birthday today, happy birthday to you from us to Michael and Joy and Power 108.9. Wake up! Big Sam in the building with us today. Yeah, wake up! <laughs> is that... Is that I'm the only person that gets scared when he starts doing that. My kids do. Oh, I bet they do. That's, not, that's how I talk to them at home. Get up! Don't you got no scoop? Get that butter! <laughs> hey, what you doing? Get that alarm clock. She's like, oh, oh Lord. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got one of my dogs. Yeah. I got all girls, man. Yeah. Oh, do you really? Yeah, man. Yeah, they, they, yeah. I got all girls. That's good. I, mean, oh, I got, don't, like I said on Instagram, I, I put a post on Instagram uh, right around Father's Day. I said, shout out to the real fathers. The ones that really take care of their kids, not the ones that just send money. You know what I'm saying? You can send money all day. But it's like I said, my the main part of my post was spend time with your kids because you can't get time back. Mm -hmm. You can always get money back. You get money back every day. You get money back every second of the hour. You know what I'm saying? You can't get the time back. You feel me? And I put that up, man. Folks, hit me, little boy. You ain't lying. You ain't the boy. God, boy, you ain't lying. I'm like, I was just doing it, you know, just because I was in my feelings for a minute. I was like, right. man, it don't make no sense, man. Because I know a lot of kids that I call my God kids, and they dad's not in their life. Mm -hmm. So I call them my God kids. Like, I got a God daughter. She got a, uh, it's cerebral palsy. Most of everybody know that. But she got, like, I think she got cerebral palsy, but her dad don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. So I, I adopt her as my daughter, so, you know, take her to the father-daughter dance and stuff yeah. like that. She's like five, four, five, six, yeah. five, six, yeah. So yeah, I've, been, I've been doing that for the last three years. Big Sam, we talked about last time you was with us, man, and we were just talking about the impact yeah. that, you know, East by East, East Side Boys sound had on the industry, you know what I'm saying? And how, you know, we listen to music today, and it seems like it's a dabbling Oh yeah, yeah. Eastside boys and, and a lot yeah, of music. You, you listen to it today. You 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 hear our sound. You hear our um, you hear our what's our A's. You hear all all our ad libs. It's it's in there. You got to put it in there. Mm -hmm. You got to put it in there. Like DJ Mustard, he he use it all the time. I, was like, I hear it one day. Say, hey man, let me get a check. Something. Yeah. Every song he put put my what's in there. How how does it on 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 this side? Like you know, I do radio, so we we take bits. From every radio right. station that you know that we hear something that we like and we may tweak it a little bit. Sometimes I'm honored when I hear somebody, especially on a big terrestrial station, right. use something that we've probably done in the past or, or, or what we do now. As an artist, though, is it honored or, or are you kind of uh, upset about it? Uh, it, it, it's, it? It can go both ways. You know, at first you kind of honored, then it's almost like. Hey man, at least acknowledge. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like acknowledge. Don't don't just do it and do it and do it and do it. Don't acknowledge where you get it from. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then when somebody say somebody is, oh no 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 no. Oh, I got just I just got that off the internet. I just got oh, you might have just got it off the internet, but it's me. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm like it's me. So I've been trying to figure out how how I can actually break that down and get a check out there. Because it's a lot of songs with my what's in Yeah. All the way back to, uh, what's that group y'all used to like? Them boys, them little boys? Mind's Behavior. Yeah, Mind's oh, Behavior. Mind's Behavior, yeah. See, my kids come to me when they be hearing Disney songs with my what's in Oh, Dad, I ain't know you did a song with uh, Ariana Grande. I'm like, I don't know that, girl. You know what I'm saying? But I hear the song, what? I'm like, that's my ad-lib stuff. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But 
I appreciate it, man. You know what I'm saying? It's just keeping me relevant and yeah. stuff like that. So then when I do go and do the stuff, everybody like, hey, man, that's you on that record. Yeah, it is me, but I ain't get no check from it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How do you know what I'm saying? But, you know, it's cool, though, man, just to see the youth reaching back to get that. Though. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, to get that. And if you if you look at the youth now, man, especially like, like out of New York, they doing, they kind of following our footsteps. Mm -hmm. Like ASAP Rocking them, I love them boys. Like the ASAP Mob, I love them. But if you listen to them, they sound like they from the South. Sound like they from the South. They jumping around and that influence. So it just, as time went on, because, you know, at, at one time, New York sounded like New York. Yeah. West Coast sounded like West Coast. South sounded like South. Now it's like a mixture of all South and everybody stuff. Right. You can't, you can't tell. It's like you can't, you can't. It's like a mixture of all the South and that. But at one time, you wouldn't even, we couldn't get no play in New York. You know what I'm saying? I remember going to New York. I remember going to New York again. We gave Flex $30,000 just to drop the bomb on uh, Bill Bill. And we had to put Big Cap on the uh, remix. Uh, rest in peace, Big Cap, R.I.P. Big Cap. But never got no shows in New York off this. Wow. Not a one. We never got not one paid show in New York off that ever. The whole wow. career. How's the relationship with you and Jonathan Smith in 2000? Me and Jonathan Smith, uh, me and Jonathan Smith are pretty cool, but me and Lil John, um, that's a whole nother story. I mean, I mean, like I say, man, like we to my brotherhood and all that, I, if we consider brothers, that's how we say, man, my brother, my brother, my brother, my brother, this, that, the other. And I still, you know, I still feel that, you know what I'm saying, even though we ain't talked since 05, really. Oh, wow. But, me personally, you know, time done went on, man, and. Wounds don't heal, and I look at it as a learning experience, you know what I'm saying? Because at the same time, I should have been on on my business, you know what I'm saying? Instead of listening to somebody say, hey, man, I got you. I got you. I'm listening to you because you had experience in in the game mm -hmm. that more than I did. You know, you had social dev. You know all the ins and outs. So I'm following your footsteps trying to learn from you, but at the same time, you was set me up to fail. Right. You know what I'm saying? What's the message you teach your kids? Teach your daughter? Man, I teach my daughter, man, to be their own person. Especially I got these girls. I try to tell them, look, don't depend on no man. No man, your daddy got you. Don't even worry about it. Don't, um, I try to tell them, I tell them all the time, um, when you ain't around me, make sure you out there representing me. I don't want nobody to come back to me tomorrow. Oh, man, your daughter. No. Every time they go somewhere, all I get is, they are so well behaved. Mm -hmm. They got manners. They, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I try to start it. You got so many kids out here, but I make them want to snatch them up. Yeah. Like, I, my, they, and my dogs tell them, you can't talk to them like that. I said, well, somebody need to talk to them like that. They mom and dad ain't talk to them like that. And they out here talking to grown up like they grown. Yeah. You ain't but 13 years old, little boy. I'll show you how to be grown in a minute, though. Hey, Big Sam is in the building. I'm going to show you how to be grown. I'm going to make your mom and daddy come see me. East side boys all day. We come back, we're going to talk more with Jamie. We're going to talk more with my man Mo. Talk about some of the new projects that he got coming up. And we're going to test y'all knowledge on how well y'all know music. With that new game that's called I'm Man ready, Hot man. Time. I'm ready, I'm ready. It's Mike and Joe in the morning. Power 108.9. Shout out. Hey, I know y'all play first, huh? I know y'all play the third verse. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the dirty first. Oh, yeah. Dirty first? Ooh. You said I got that. Oh, you You want to try to play dirty first? I just play whatever came up first. <laughs> you just play what you want to play. It's internet, so we play. That's a luxury. You play what you want to play. Ain't no time for that light man blinking. Right. That light man blinking. Uh-oh, back Yeah, man, that's my cup, you know what I'm saying? 
when your mama didn't teach you how to drink out of a sippy cup. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and you know, I made a game. meme of myself and put that on her. <laughs> oh, drinking out a gang can, they say, well, your mama never taught you how to drink out of city cup. <laughs> and folks hit me left and right, like, boy, you stupid. So tell me about the shoes. Yeah, man. It's the, the new Eastside Boys shoe. Day right. one, Eastside Boys. Ooh. We got the blue. We got the white with the blue. We got the white, red, and black. The black, white, and red. Nice. Yeah, I know we got some more pads coming in in a minute. Supposed to have another shipment about 50 coming in. Now, give me some of them up there on Counter Row. <laughs> bro, you look for me. I've been running up and down Counter Road. You look for me, bro. Yeah, for real. When I see him, he look for me. How you gonna get that video? I'm corny. I'm trying to find my favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, See that? Like what? I said, oh, man, y'all didn't see that? Like what? 
I said, oh, they're going to come back around. Pop back again. Like, two pop. They're like, what? I'm like, man, you got to be crazy. And all of a sudden, footage started coming in. They started showing off stuff. It was just like, wow, bro. Like, wow. But it's a lot of conspiracies behind it, though. Mm-hmm. Like, I ain't going to lie to you. I don't think you're dead. I say it all the time. Tupac, to me, is like the Black Elvis Presley. He's been spotted so many times. And it was just something about that death, man. Like, it was almost like they, 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 he was dead and they buried him the next day type stuff. Like, right. like it was like certain stuff didn't go right for me. Like, like the biggest death, it felt like a real death. You know what I'm saying? You got to see the casket. They drove it through the neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? It was like the time that went by, like, like a normal death. You know what I'm saying? Like time go by and mm-hmm. then, you know, you get ready to have a funeral. But it was like Tupac. It was like, hey, he was dead on Monday, shot on Monday, then Wednesday. He buried, like, huh? Who? How'd that happen? So, I got the spiritual theories about Tupac. I ain't gonna and, and I was still wondering, like, I'm a, I'm a fan. We we go out to Vegas, but, you know, once a year or so. And I know how that strip look on any oh, given day. Mm-hmm. Like, how can no one have seen? That's the other thing. If you've been to Vegas, not just that strip period, just Vegas period at night, man. He didn't even tell me nobody didn't see that. Nothing to tell me. There was nobody standing right there seeing this whole thing. Mm-hmm. Not even just nobody. You never tell me. It was a group of people that was sitting there that didn't see this whole thing. Right. And traffic. On the strip. Good. Traffic. Yeah, traffic. On the strip. Yeah. And, matter of fact, and they were stopped at a red light. Right. Which means there's cars behind them. Cars going across the green light. Okay. But nobody seen that. And they were the first car at the light. Nobody seen that. Nothing at all. Hey, well, that, hey, man, that, uh, tell you, man. That we, our um, specials gonna you know be he got shot in the studio in, in, in New York. In New York, yeah. Man, we recorded in that studio. Oh, you did? And I didn't know that was the studio until I watched the footage later on. And I said, that's why. That, that studio had an eerie feeling, man. Mm-hmm. It was an eerie feeling in that studio. It was like a building with nothing but studios in it on different floors. Just studio, studio, studio. But it was an eerie feeling when you walk in there. I bet. But I didn't realize that's where he got shot at. But it was an eerie feeling when you walk in that lobby part because it's just the elevators. You're like, man, this don't feel right. Mm-hmm. And then I seen I'm like, whoa, we was at Quad Studio. We record though. But it was after he got shot and stuff like that, but I didn't know that was that studio. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Big Sam hanging out with us. Eastside Boys in the building. Yeah. Also, Mo is in the building. The Perfect Romance. That's the movie that we're talking about today. That's that movie that we're pumping over here. And also, my man Jamie Hayes is in the building. Jamie the Motivator, the new book. Ten ways to avoid or avoid the hype while living a healthier life. Now this is the portion of the show, fellas, where we play this game called Man, How Time Flies. Let's go. And here's the deal. We were riding this is how it started. I, we were in the car and a record came on and you know how they put the date or the year that the song yeah, came yeah, out? Yeah. I was like, damn, that record came out thirty years ago? Can't believe believe it. Like timeless music or whatever. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pit Al, I'm gonna need you to come on this side for a second. We're gonna take this side of the room versus this side of the room. And what we're going to do is we're going to play a record, and I want you to get with your team and come up with the year that you think the record came out. Mm -hmm. So whoever gets closest to the year without going over gets a point. They're going to be three points awarded. We're going to 93. We're going to 93. What? 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 I think I remember you graduated high school. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to take it back since we're talking about uh, Tupac. Uh-oh. Got some biggie for you. What year did this record came, come Let's out? See.
right here. She had a hit back in the day. It was called Umbrella by Rihanna. What year did Rihanna's Umbrella come out? Kind of that's kind of, that's not too far back. Yeah, that ain't too far back right there. What, we at 18 now? We at 18? Yes, yeah, sir. Too far back right Rihanna's umbrella, what year did that record come out? Big Sam, since you guys won the last one, you get to go first. We get to go first? Yes, uh, We're going to go out on a limb, me and my team. We're going to go out on a limb, you know, because we are like eagles. So we're going to just, we're going to perch out here on this limb. We're going to go 2011. 2011, all right. Mo, how about you and your team? What year do you think that record came out? Uh, we, we went with 2010. 2010. Uh, I got one on the internet, though. Somebody <coughs> just uh-uh, uh-uh. turned in. Nah, uh-huh. you're going to let yeah, that time. Yeah, you're going to lie. You're going to lie. They're getting the wrong answers in there. <laughs> if you said anywhere near 2007, Ooh, you are correct. Right. I'm from 2007. Right, got it. 2007? 11 yeah, years ago. That's what that just came out. Yeah, how time flies. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that just came out a couple years back. Right, right. that's yeah. what I'm talking about, right? Time is music. That uh, record was written by The Dream. Yep, yeah, by The Dream. And he actually wrote it for, you remember? Britney Spears. Mary J. Mary J turned it down. Ooh. I would have oh, Hey, he wrote for Britney Spears. Britney Spears is hey, on that list too? Yeah, I just seen that on the, uh, on the Drake show the other night I watched. He said he wrote uh, okay. Umbrella. Yeah, I'm probably said I wrote that for uh, Britney Spears. They were like, that would work for her. Yeah, and even with Mary J, when Mary J got it, she turned it down. She was like, nah, because I couldn't see Mary J doing nah, that right see, there. Definitely couldn't see Britney Spears. Though. Definitely couldn't see her doing that. Oh, you said that? I was like, Britney Spears? She did really? that with Jeff. <laughs> All right, here, right now, uh, uh, Big Sam, your crew is up one to nothing. This is the final song right here. We're going to take some They didn't get that one? Yeah, I thought we got that now, one. They got 2010. Oh, you got to be. Oh, got it. This is right now. Oh, this is right now. Oh, over. I'm uh, sorry. They were like, Chuck is wild. Chuck is wild. I was going to come back on this one. And you talking about you, you was, you uh, was like bubblegum, bubblegum in a dish or something. Hey, what about that microphone to do from Chuck is wild? You so oh, old. That little skinny jump yeah. with the little thing on there? Yeah. 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 You old, bro. Hey, how about this one right here? We're going to take you back. Bon Jovi, living on a prayer. <laughs> I, got, I, I really got to talk about seeing Spock on this. That's his era. Got on that run. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. All right. Mo, talk to your team. What year did you think uh, Bon Jovi's Living on a Prayer was released? Oh, I'm going there. I'm going there. Who go first? Three seconds. Three. I'm going with 89. 89. All right. All right. Uh, Big Sam. Uh, Your team has kicked 84. 1984. If you said anywhere near 1987, you are correct. Uh, you went over. You went over. over. <laughs> Congratulations, you brother. Though. Uh, oh no, I won. Yeah, yeah, you won. won. Okay, you won. won. Yeah, yeah. I got you, Gary. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we come this back. This is right. This is right. right. I got you. Yeah. Oh, we went wild in. I ain't even got. I ain't even got to talk to nobody. I just talk to somebody. Though. Yeah. <laughs> like, what's your What'd you bid on that? Oh, one dollar. One dollar. <laughs> one dollar. <laughs> I'm trying to beat them to sleep. <laughs> well, you know, it's unfair. I do music and do movies, so that would be the movies. You need to bring movies out. What, what, what year did your movie come? We're going to bring you, yeah, make it fair. Yeah, back on. Yeah, make it fair. Yeah. Hey, he come producing the show, bro. <laughs> 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 what year did Boomerang? I used to have to throw some movie titles out. What year did Boomerang come out? <laughs> mm, what year? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> if I don't know. I should have checked it all the time. You check it and see what it is. 89. Oh, wow. 99? 89. 89? Yeah, that's it. Is that Yeah. 89 or 90? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You about right. Yeah, yeah. That's one. Mike and Joy in the morning. MichaelandJoy.com is the website. Hey, yesterday, uh, Janet Jackson was found front and, front and center at her dad, Joe Jackson's funeral on Monday, along with right. various other family members. The service was held at the Forest Lawn. Uh, funeral, Joan in Glendale, California, where Michael Jackson is actually in tune. In tune. Uh, TMZ broke the story that Joe passed away last Friday after battling pancreatic cancer. Uh, Michael is in a uh, mausoleum at Forest Lawn. It's safe to say that Joe's resting 
uh, place will be nearby. It's interesting because as TMZ reported back in the day, Michael actually cut Joe out of his will and mm. uh, making Catherine and his kids the beneficiaries. Now, Monday's service was private for friends and family, and a public service will follow in the next couple of day, couple of days. So rest in peace to Joe Jackson. Mo, you're out in Atlanta, man. You promoted the, the, the perfect romance, man, and we look behind. You got several other film uh, billboards back there, Angel, the horror film back there. Yeah. Uh, you got the perfect romance, and I just learned that you're actually working on a kid's movie right yeah, now, right? I'm excited about my kid's movie. It's called Spring Break, the kid's action movie. Um, I, my son is going to play in it. His name is Real Love McCoy. He is so energetic, and he, he was an actor since he came out of the womb. Okay. So, <laughs> so uh, we, we're in the funding stages of that now, and I'm doing that creatively through crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm doing something different as well. Is I'm, anybody who makes a donation of $5 or more, I'm letting them become a co-producer on the movie. There you go. So their name goes on the back of the uh, credits and, uh, you know. And people, when we were talking earlier, and we were talking about crowdfunding and how yeah. we just had this perception, like, why is Mo asking us for money to right. shoot his project? Yeah. Spike Lee did the same thing, and the crazy part is they gave Spike Lee the same riff rap and kickback, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't I don't mind it though uh, because people don't understand what it takes to make a movie and um, Spike Lee raised 1.5 million dollars and then GoFundMe made billions of dollars you know what I mean so if if GoFundMe is getting money to fund projects for cats getting out of the street why can't I fund my movie from uh, my peers around me and people that I meet and network with and they can they can chip in and mm -hmm. we can make a great movie. There you go. You know? The perfect romance, man. That's uh that's your baby right there. Yeah. 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 That's your baby because now even the distributor that you're working with, you're we're continuing to to, to get this thing. The number one movie is at Mercury, right? Uh it it was Maverick film. Maverick, yes, yeah. Maverick film. Yeah, so uh that's one of my goals. My first goal with this movie was to just get it in the theaters. Mm -hmm. I did that, and then the next goal was to get it in Walmart. And through Maverick, I was able to accomplish that. Now my next goal is to make it the number one independent movie at Maverick. There you you go. know what I mean? So yeah. I'm going to just get out here and keep pushing it. There you go. Jamie, the motivator, I, I know that this has been a long time coming for us. Because like I said, we first met at the, uh, with... Um, Game Changer 180. Yeah, there you go. With Game Changer 180 out there on the east side. Uh, back in the day, man, <laughs> and and for you, man, you've been speaking ever since, man. What what's next for you, man? What, what's next for me is uh, I'm speaking my book. I'm doing entrepreneur talk. Uh, I'm helping other you know fitness enthusiasts become entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of people have a craft, but a lot of people don't know how to turn that craft into a business and make it profitable. So uh, I teach other young entrepreneurs how to do that, and I'm uh, just taking that brand on the road. And when you talk fitness and health and stuff like that, you know. You feel a lot better when you're healthy. You know what I'm saying? Especially in corporate America, that people want that. Fat. Let me be trying to get that hooked up so you can talk to your, your fan. Your fan. Oh, yeah. yeah, there you go. All right, there you go. You ready, folks? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. But you feel good. It, it, it makes you feel good, doesn't it? Exactly. So the thing is, whether you're in corporate America or you're an entrepreneur, like being in the office of health, we have to get you to the next level. Uh, we chase all our life chasing health. Only or chasing wealth only to spend on health. So mm. the thing is, it's like when we get serious about our health, we can actually go to another level. So finances go up, relationships go up, um, all those areas of our lives get better because we're healthy. Yeah, and that's what I promote. Because uh, a lot of people think it's when you're older, overweight, and things like that. When you look in the mirror and you know you're not happy, you really can't be happy for nobody else. Right. And when you're not confident.